Welcome back to the Tinkerage. In my last video, I gave a rundown of essentially some first aid principles and a little look at the idea of first aid kits. It's quite a long video. I uh, talked about tourniquets and preparedness, and I briefly looked at the sorts of things that I had in my workshop first aid kit. Now, I think it would be appropriate to actually, a shorter video, just goes through some of the things that I have in this first aid kit. Remember, one of the key messages of that video was the idea that it's better to have the equipment and the knowledge, training to handle an emergency, to be prepared for it, and never have to use it, than to not have the equipment, not have the training, and need it. The particular container isn't important. It needs to be something that's going to protect the equipment. It needs to be something that's easy to find. It needs to be something that holds the enough equipment but isn't so big that you decide I need to get rid of it, but isn't too small that you can't have enough of the things that you might need. This particular case is one that I had many years ago when I was doing a lot of hill walking and mountaineering. It's now my workshop first aid kit. So let's have a look inside. So this has a, a number of different pockets. In the first pocket, I have steri strips, so it's called skin closures. There's a number of different names for them. These are great for lacerations. Essentially, they're thin pieces of tape, already cut, suitable for bringing the edges of a wound together. I also have some butterfly closures. This one's actually been ripped open at some point. They perform a very similar duty to the steri strips. You secure it on one side of a wound, and use that to pull the skin closed and then press down on the other side. And if you alternate pulling from different sides, you can pull a wound in quite neatly. And if you do a good enough job, you can minimize scarring. I have some regular plasters, band-aids, variety of different sizes. I have antiseptic wipes, quite a few of those. They're designed to clean off, quite important. In a workshop to have something where you can clean a wound might just help reduce chances of infection. Then in the main body of the pouch I have a little bag with some latex gloves in. These are probably not really for my use there if somebody else who perhaps is a little bit blood phobic and they're having to treat me they're available for that. Certainly in something like a uh, car first aid kit having gloves I would describe it as being essential. Now I have an assortment of bandages. These are what's called conforming bandages. Some of them have dressings on them, some of them don't. And they're designed so three that do not have a dressing, two that do have dressings and another two that don't. They're to hold things on to a wound. In a similar way, I have some tape. Now, if you're gonna have tape, particularly if it's a zinc oxide type tape, which is hard to tear, then you need to make sure that you have some scissors. Now, of course, I have scissors in the tinkerage, and I carry a knife in my pocket, Swiss Army knife, which has scissors on all the time as well, but it might not be me that's using it. I do have some micropore tape. This is a little bit battered. This is easy to tear, so you do not need scissors with that. And they're great for securing non-adherent wound dressings. So things like this. There's a trade name, melanin. There's a variety of different types. Some of them come with adhesive pads built onto them. So this particular one, for example, some of them don't. And if they don't, you have to hold them in place somehow, which is where perhaps a bandage or tape comes into its own. I have a couple of SteriPods. This is sterile saline. The top just gets torn off and then you can squirt that into your eye. A couple of safety pins can be useful for improvising slings, but I do have a couple of triangular bandages. 
Now, triangular bandages are extremely useful pieces of kit, very, very versatile, not just for making slings, they can be used in a variety of ways. Talked in the previous video about tourniquets. Triangular bandages are something that is suitable to be used as an improvised tourniquet with something else, maybe a, a screwdriver, in order to make a windlass. I have a pair of forceps. So this looks like it's an old pair of eyebrow tweezers. But they're excellent for getting splinters out. I have my field dressing. So this is designed for extreme blood loss. Easy to open. Can literally be torn open with your teeth and one hand. And I also have a burn dressing. Now this particular one is designed for short-term use where you can't get access to water. Now I do have a tap in the tinkerage, but it's not always easy to access that. And because I do have a blowtorch and other things where it can get hot, one day when I get into blacksmithing, I'll make sure I have more of these, because if I start blacksmithing, the event of a severe burn is going to increase massively. So that is my workshop first aid kit. Hopefully that will help you in making decisions about what first aid things you might have in your workshop. Remember, as I said in the first video in this series, you need to consider the nature of the work that you're doing, the nature of the tools you have, and the risk and the nature of the injuries you might get from those. And you need to then choose suitable first aid items and locate them based on that assessment. Stay safe out there. Bye for now.